I'm joined now by Dr. Stephen Selinger, Chief Medical Officer at Luminous Health and Arundel Medical Center outside the state capitol in Annapolis. Dr. Selinger, could you just tell us to start, what is it like in your hospital as these COVID cases skyrocket? Uh, good morning, Allison. We we are good at morning. capacity in our in our hospital in, in Maryland. We have every bed filled. Our emergency room volumes are one third greater than they normally are. Uh, we have prolonged waiting times in our emergency department as a consequence of this. Uh, we um, are at a tipping point um, in our hospitals in Maryland. Uh, several have declared crisis standards of care, and many are on contingency standards of care. Right now, does your hospital have the resources that you need to treat COVID patients? And how about non-COVID patients? We, we do. We have expanded into every usable bed in our hospital. Um, our nurse-patient ratios are at where they were um, several months ago. Uh, we've been able to uh, hire agency nurses to be able to appropriately take care of our patients. We are at a tipping point. Fundamentally, things are different than they were earlier in the pandemic. Earlier in the pandemic, ED volumes were lower and patients were avoiding the hospital. Now we care for the non-COVID um, illnesses within the community as well as COVID patients. Uh, on Thanksgiving, we had 18 COVID patients in the hospital. Today, we have 95. And you saw the slope of that line, that escalation of hospitalizations in Maryland. That's, that slope has never been steeper. Unbelievable. Uh, as we look at that, we know cases are still going up. If you're saying right now that you're at a tipping point, how are you and how is your hospital preparing uh, for things to likely get even worse? I mean, how much more can you possibly manage? Well, you know, our, our workforce is really at risk here. You know, many people have left the workforce during the pandemic. Uh, our um, workforce throughout the state is fatigued, both emotionally as well as, as physically. And compared to earlier in the pandemic, we have many more of the workforce being out daily. We have 50 um, healthcare personnel out in our hospital daily from COVID. Uh, and uh, essentially that tipping point rests with the workforce because if we don't have sufficient yeah. workforce to care for our patients in conventional ways, then we have to design alternative care models uh, to uh, care for our patients. Uh, let's let's talk about that that burnout that you brought up because uh, look, the average person nearly two years into this pandemic is saying, "I am burnt out. I, I'm tired of this life." And we are not going into hospitals every day. You're talking about hospitals that were already short staffed before Omicron. People have quit. Things are getting worse. How big of a factor is that burnout that I can't do this anymore going to be over the next weeks, months? It's a huge factor, emotional health as well as physical health. We're doing everything yeah. we can to support the workforce. We have uh, wellness programs where we engage our, our workforce and, and try to care for them and, and, and try to identify uh, the need for help. In your view... As you look out uh, into 2022, let's just take it one small bit of a time, right? Let's start with January. What does the next month look like for you, for the folks who work in your hospital? Uh, what are you expecting? We're, we're taking this day by day, and we're looking at those triggers that might really precipitate us going into a crisis standard of care where we really need to change the way we care for patients in order to take care of our population. So we're looking at our emergency department vol volumes. We are, we are looking at our number of COVID patients. We're looking at our wait times and we're, and we're trying to manage redeploying personnel. Um, we've already, as, as indicated, we've stopped non-urgent and emergent surgeries because we have no other way to regulate the volumes that are coming into our hospital. Uh, Dr. Selinger, uh, thanks to you, thanks to your staff. It's hospitals like yours and around the country who, who quite frankly, are, are saving lives. We owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you so much for all you're doing.